G'day, I'm Clive and welcome. Today's video, tips on cleaning your boots and keeping them in good condition. Now, each year or most days I talk to people and they explain things to me and why they do things the way they do. I've been online researching different things and the difference between using polish and using a dubbing. Is it worth using just one or just the other one or both of them? And a few tips also on cleaning your boots and points that people miss out and it ends up ruining their boots. So first of all using polish and using dubbing. The simple answer to that is using both. Both do similar in some ways, but completely different in other ways. So combining the use of some polish and the use of dubbing will give you a lot more, um, let's say, care for your boots and it will enable your boots to last a long time. A lot longer than if you used one or the other. Now, what polish and what dubbing to actually buy? Now that depends where you are in the world. One thing I would recommend is a lot of the cheap ones that you'll get from the, the dollar store or anywhere like that. They're okay if you just want to keep your work shoes clean or your work boots clean and you're not over concerned about waterproofness or how long they're going to last because your job will destroy them before any of this will be of benefit. So the the better brand polish is the better way to go. Now I'm using Kiwi. Now I've used Kiwi as far as I know all my life and it's always worked really, really, really good. Not sponsored by Kiwi, it's just what I uh, have found with use of it. And the same with the dubbing, that's a Kiwi. Difference between the two in general is your polish uh, is mainly, uh, let's say it, it's mainly a dye, it'll give your boots its colour back. It's like the outside of my boots at the moment were very similar to this colour because they've dried out and for the last 12 months I hadn't done the right thing. Uh, I was totally stupid with things going on. It, I just didn't put that at the front of, of importance. I wish I had, but I didn't do it. So that's my mess up. So the polish, like I was saying, is more of getting the colour back to your boots that you want. It comes in many different colours where you can match it if not 100% to the shoes you wear or the boots you wear or the runners you wear but close so it'll bring back the colour and make them look good. It will help with nourishment of the leather and it will help with the waterproofness. It won't give you 100% nourishment and 100% waterproof, but if your boots are up clean, like your work shoes, if they're nice and clean and you polish them on a regular basis, this will probably be enough on its own to help keep the nourishment level that you need and the waterproofness that you need. Dubbing. is uh, more of a nourishment and waterproof for your boots. Now, it's not going to stain like these do to give you the colour back, but it will fill the gaps that this isn't as good at. Now, this is made out of different moisturizers, different colours, different this, different that. And your dubbing, a good one, 
is mainly the natural waxes. So uh, there's no list. Let's have a look. What's in this one? No, they don't give you a list of what's in here. But what it does say is apply evenly with a soft cloth, rub well into leather, not suitable for suede. So I haven't used this on anything else, nor this only on leather. That's what I will say. Now, when should you use the polish? When should you use dubbing? Now, I've been making the mistake of alternating basically I've been using the polish on one clean and a dubbing on another clean but I've found out with research different companies different uh, walking groups and uh, hiking groups and mountain climbing groups what has come to my or come to me while reading all them is using both because Get it clean, get the colour back in them, give it basic protection. And then when this has finished, you've finished using this for the clean, do a final coat with a dubbing. And that will fill the little gaps, let's say, in the process that the polish won't fill. So that's something I've learnt. And the majority of people online, the majority of companies online, the majority of tests have always uh, has come down to polish and dubbing at the same time to keep your boots in good condition. So first thing first, if you're going to be getting back from a hike and you want to get your boots nice and clean, you're going to have to use a brush of some sort to get all the loose dirt off. If your boots are wet and muddy, you're going to have to give them a rinse and a wipe down to get rid of all the dirt and dust. Let them dry and then start the process of polishing and dubbing. Another question is, and another thing I've seen other people do when they show it on, uh, online, laces. I'm so surprised at how many people say they're going to do a thorough clean and you do not need to take your laces out. Well, to me, that's not right. Because your laces are always going to cover an area. It's like if I put laces in mine, these would be pulled down so I cannot get underneath. And they come through here so I cannot get between. So I'm going to have a dirty piece in between and underneath. And it's not going to get nourished properly and that is a weak spot so if that leather's not being cleaned or looked after that's going to go and it's going to cost you three four however many hundred dollars you spend on your boots to replace your boots where if you spend an extra five minutes or ten minutes taking your boots out and then cleaning in between where your laces go that's going to save you a lot of money especially when you've walked your boots in and they're just at a point where they're nice and comfortable i had a pair of boots that i had for five years the sole was one of those where you, you get like that sponge as your cushioning now i got the top it was uh, feeling really nice really comfortable supporting my ankles but that sponge bit disintegrated and there's nothing I could have done about it. So the soles on this are the, was, how do you pronounce it, uh, Vibram soles. And they're just solid soles all the way that I can see. And I have seen people have their soles replaced. Now I found a place here in Perth in Western Australia where I'm told that they will replace these soles for you probably won't be cheap but it'll be a lot cheaper than a complete new pair of boots and then going through the process to get them to fit comfortable so i'll be getting in contact with them and i'll be finding out and when i do find out i'll put a comment up on the community page or i might just make another video 
and put that as part of a, a list of things which will be useful for boots where you can get things and the products you can use uh, to just give you an update so all this really needs laces out so you can get in between now I find that difficult using a cloth or a large brush for example to get in them gaps and hence these here soft bristle toothbrushes now I've got this one here which will clean all the dust out of the spots and that's all I'm going to be using that for is cleaning the dust out now I just I thought I'd cleaned all this here on either side of the tongue because it's only in the middle panel which is uh, leather and the outer I think is a Gore-Tex sort of material but the actual toothbrush we're brushing it just now just a quick one I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the camera but there's a lot more dirt there so one thing I was thinking then was okay I can brush as much off but get your vacuum and actually suck all around this Gore-Tex and draw out as much dust as possible. Now, before you waterproof this Gore-Tex around or whatever this material is, finish your polishing process first. And then cover as much as you can up, but then spray your Gore-Tex. And then remember to wipe down any spray that's got onto your leather for the Gore-Tex just wipe it off even if you have to use a slightly damp cloth and then go over it with a dry cloth so there's another thing to remember to help protect your boots now I've got more a couple of these are spares so my old ones are through, thrown away and I've been out and bought uh, an economy pack of soft and I've got six brushes for four dollars fifty Australian so what's that? It's a couple of pounds, is it? Or a couple of and a bit dollars, uh, American. And again, another spot that people miss, and the cloth doesn't get into properly when you're applying your polish, is on the inside of where the leather meets the Gore-Tex, and also down where the stitching is of the leather. Now I can see where I have pushed the polish in with using a cloth but there's little points down here and here I think it's a combination of the glue and not being able to get into it properly that I'm missing so if I keep doing that these are going to be weak spots and the leather is going to perish so I've got one will be for putting it on so I'll use the blue one and a red one for taking it off so I don't want to get them mixed up because that's going to have a lot more polish in than that one and then I'll go over with the duster and if you want to you could use one of your little uh, cotton wool the ones with the little um, sticks in just to actually get in there and get any excess polish out and then you're going to be able to keep all these weak points nice and nourished now I can see on this part here where I've got the shine but there's some dull bits around the edge where I haven't got it in all the way so I'll be getting that done today I'm going to put another uh, coat of polish on all these points not the whole boots just these little points where it's difficult to get with a cloth and I'm going to give them a, a clean out and then I'm going to do the second process because I'd only just clean these boots a couple of days ago so they're actually ready for the dubbing. They do recommend you give these a few hours. So I think a couple of days is good in between the actual polishing and the dubbing. So. Anything else? Yeah, when I polish my boots and dust them off, I also make sure I dust all around the side of the soles. And it doesn't matter if it bothers you, but I've just put the brown polish, I've just went over all the rubber bit, which will actually help preserve the actual rubber. 
I've let it go down the side so it's nice and clean and there's a coating on there so it's going to restrict the actual dirt pickup. Yeah, and always remember, clean the bottoms, especially here in Western Australia. We've got a disease called dieback and that kills the plants and trees, shrubbery and everything out in the bush here. So always clean the soles of your boots so you don't spread that. And when you are walking, you'll get certain points on the uh, tracks like the Bilman track and the local walks I've made videos of. If you've seen them, you'll see me go up to this thing where I put my feet and there's some bush, bushes on it and there's a pump or a lever pump and I put my foot through a thing at the bottom and what that does it sprays a disinfectant thing that kills the dieback on the bottom of your boots so when I continue walking that has reduced substantially the chance of carrying the dieback so cleaning the bottom of your boots here in Western Australia or anywhere if it if any, any diseases, you'll carry them on and on and on. So remember to clean the soles of your boots. So first thing I want to get done today is the polish. So I'm just out of the way. Now I'm using the dark tan for leather. Now it looks almost black. I had to get a bit on my um, cloth here to make sure but you, only if you look at it, you can just see it's brown. So I'm not going to use the cloth this time. And use the blue. So put a bit of that on. First thing I'll do is I'll go down all these bits here. Get into them little corner bits. Don't put too much on, just enough to make it look like it's gone dull because then you know you've got polish on that point. Make sure I'm pushing it into the overlaps of the leather. And now I've got where one of my uh, lace spits go. So make sure I put it all the way in there, push it underneath as much as possible. Finish the top of this bit. Now I'm doing this in real time just to show you it doesn't take much time to do this. I'm putting extra polish on because I haven't done this properly for a long, long time. And up top here on this one, I can actually see the colour of the leather changing as I rub this in and rub it underneath and make sure I get it up here as well even though the water hardly goes up this high just in case now I don't normally polish this part because it's just doesn't seem to need it but I will do it today and the polish is soaking in so it, yes it did need it and now I've got stitching where it's all stitched now I'm going to give that a bit of a concentration on that to push it in actually finish around this heel bit where it joins the sole Get into the stitching to make sure we get some good coverage in there. There 
Okay. And that is the important part where your laces go through at the bottom. Again, I'm pushing it along the side of where the leather meets up with the Gore-Tex material there. I've got a bit of tatty looking thread there. Now I've done along the bottom like we just saw, so I'm folding the lace uh, loops over what I do in them between. And the toe box. Make sure I'm getting it in here. This is where the, most of the water will be. And it runs off your walking pants or if you go through puddles. Keep it a good while in. Stitching on here. Now, making sure that it gets around all the edge of the leathers and the stitching. I'm about halfway through, so what I'll do is I'll speed the camera up because you can see how quick it is to get this done, and then we'll go on afterwards. Okay, that's all the stitching's done, where the leathers overlap has all been done. I've done the tongue again, inside, where the tongue meets up with the material, the Gore-Tex, whatever it is. Believe it or not, that took a fair bit of polish. A lot more than I was expecting. I don't know if you can see in there, a bit down a bit more where the brush has gone into it. But what I can see now is the colour in between where the laces go and where I hadn't done it has all gone a bit darker now to match where I polished it the other day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that half an hour and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to clean all that out. So I'll see you in half an hour. Yeah, that's been about an hour now. And the actual polish areas have uh, gone a dull. So the next thing I'm going to do is concentrate just getting the the main areas before I get the small toothbrush and getting in the joints. I'll just give it a bit of a wipe, get the worst of it off, and that means there'll be less going on to the actual toothbrush bristles, which means it'll be cleaner when I'm finished. Now you can already see I can the actual points of the boot in this area the little gaps, little corners should I say and under the stitching we've using the toothbrush that's done a lot better job than using a cloth 
Unless some of you probably say, well, why didn't I just use the brush? I could have done, but I didn't really want to get these too dirty. I want them kept as good as condition as possible. And these are a lot cheaper and they can get in the gaps a lot easier. It's nice seeing all this behind where the laces go. Shining up a little bit as I wipe them. Now let's have a go with this. Oh yeah, that looks a, a lot nicer. I don't have the camera I'll be able to pick it up. I'll give a bit of a zoom, angle it towards the light. All we're looking at is down in the gaps here. It's just made it a lot easier to get in. I think doing this this way as well, if there's any leftover polish, it's getting pushed around the back of the leather into the stitches. between the lace loops. Now one thing I have noticed and know that the polish has got in there is we've lost that lighter colour of the leather. It's now matching the rest of the boots. It's actually quite pleasing just taking my time to clean these. Just watching it change. And knowing that my feet are going to be protected in any wet puddles. I'm going to be saving money because I'm not going to be spending it on new boots so soon. Like I said earlier, next thing before the actual leather goes, I think will be the sole. I've probably got four or five hundred kilometres left on that, so that'll be should be fine for now. What I did do to preserve the soles is for my business, I go down delivering leaflets for my business, <clears throat> and these are so comfortable. I was wearing these, but then I noticed walking on the concrete and the paving I was wearing. The soles up a lot more, I just didn't think about it. I didn't know that would happen, but I just didn't think. I just wanted some something comfortable on my feet. So I went out and bought just a cheap pair of walking shoes just to do that. That's it, that's the polish all gone in. I don't know if you can see the condition of that little toothbrush now. Let's give it another buff up with this. Yes, looks a lot nicer. Oh, I haven't done a tongue yet. Rub it into that stitching. Now, what I'll do, instead of keeping you hanging on, I'll finish this one, I'll get that one done, and I'll come back. Okay, so it's locking a lot better now. We've got in to all the gaps and behind the loops and the hooks for the laces. So now the same process, but with dubbing. 
I've put my two flushes away. That's just the uh, dirt one, the dust one. Uh, which one should we use? Use the aqua, is it? Greeny, bluey, light blue. Typical bloke, it's a blue. Toothbrush to put the dubbing on. Rub it down into all the cracks and between the laces and then I'll use the cloth to do the rest. We've got the dubbing all rubbed in there into all the corners around the lace loops and hooks and we've noticed it started to soak into points so we'll leave it for an hour or two and then we'll come back have another look and we'll continue and see how they turn out right, it's been about an hour hour and 15 minutes and i don't know if you could tell on the video you can see where the boots have gone dull now or in uh, patches have gone dull so that means the dubbing is soaked in so the next step is to give them a, uh, a rub and a bit of a buff up okay as we just looked at close up that you can see where the dubbing is soaked in it's not as shiny it's a little bit dull so now it's time to get a toothbrush back out do all these stitching bits and the little corner bits and give it a bit of a buff up and then it'll be time to get the laces back in and I'll show you two things I do to make these more comfortable for me and easier when I've got the laces in so see you shortly now I'm buffing it up with the, the soft bristle and what I'm doing is pushing it into where the overlapping of the leather the stitching and into the sole and into the laces And it's just starting to look nice now as far as I can see and what I think. I'll give you a close up shortly and you tell me. It's not a pair of military boots, show the prey boots. It's a nice even colour it's looking now. And you know when you get a, a decent pair of leather boots you get that that smell. It's very similar to that now, it's just smelling nice. So it looks good, it smells good. It, You can feel the leather now. It doesn't feel like plastic or anything dusty, it's just yeah, a nice leather feeling. Boots wise it is. Right, let's quick look over this one again, make sure I haven't missed anything. And that's a bit of the original glue. That's I'll give this a bit of more of a buff. What I am getting is a lot of the dirt from behind. The, uh, where's that gone now? There, you see a lot of dirt from between the leather and the rubber here coming out. So that's the advantage of one of these brushes. You know it's going to be clean in there now. Right, the last bit, give it a little buff down here. Done it once, let's do it again. Behind the eyelets for the lace, the loops, the hooks, whatever you want to call them. I think I did this one. Yes. So let's bring the camera a little bit closer so you can have a look and see how they've turned out. Here's a side view. Looking nice. 
in the front view. Let's lift it up a bit to get this one nice and clean. I don't know if you can see now in the edges. It's gone into all the corners here. Same along the toe. Barely see any of the scuffs from bush walking and caught on logs and branches and twigs as you're walking and going through the scrub. And along where the laces go, nice even colour. Turn it out nice. No. Let's get the laces in now. And you go in the box so that one I don't lose them and two so plus plus the cat doesn't get them. Find the centre. I think these are going to need to be placed and starting to wear. But the centre is there. Put the first one through. Put the opposite side through. Grab them both at the same time. Hold the centre in place. And pull them up. So here they are both laced and the laces start at the bottom like normal then they go through the first loop then diagonal across to the second loop but then I don't go diagonal to the third loop for the laces for the, to the third eye I bring it just straight up from the second one to the third one the one above and the reason for that is when I've got the laces coming across here I've got a lot of pressure on my foot at that point and it's very uncomfortable and it starts hurting very quick I think within four or five kilometers so I just brought that up so there's no pressure coming across here then diagonal up to the fourth one here and then I just tied like a shoelace knot the first part before doing the bow and what I've found with doing this uh, shoelace knot here is once I've tied it up around the ankle I can set this one at one pressure tighten it up lace it around the hooks and then I can do this at a second pressure so that part of my foot will be held to one degree that one will be held at a different degree so I'll get the support which I need at the bottom the support I need at the top but it's comfortable and it doesn't slip I think it's the first time I noticed it slip I'd done about 20 kilometers so just doing that single shoelace knot there holds it in place and it is a lot more comfortable being able to have two different areas and the same on this one normal diagonal up to the third one diagonal to the fourth shoelace knot and then I can do that up at a second pressure there you go the care and a couple of little tips hopefully they helped you of keeping your boots clean taking care of them and extending their lifespan so I like that now they've all got the even colour all over including behind the lace uh, loops and hooks including all around by the toes and along the side in the little peak get, um, corner bits it all looks really nice so the only thing left to do is get out and do a bushwalk so I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have and you're not already a subscriber please go down below click on the like button then click on the notification bell next to it and select all and if you are already a subscriber again i thank you very much hit that thumbs up button